Here we go. Let's do this. We've got one life, one shot. Who do you want to be? What do you want to do? Addicted to Betterment, a podcast to inspire us to keep going, to try something new, to dream, to think big, bigger, to overcome. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So whether you follow us on our mentality that we got one shot, here's the deal. Life goes fast. Life goes really fast. And I'm sure you are ready for the best year of your life. Here we are. We're in it 2024. And whether you said that or not, whether you said 2024 is my year, this is going to be the best year of my life, you want it. We've all said it before. We've all had our years of the past where we're like, this is going to be the best year. And then by February 15th, maybe, or who knows, maybe we got till May and we're like, I don't even remember what I said was going to be so great. So where do we fall short? Whatever it is that you believe, like it's not all ours to drive, but it sure is ours to knock the door down, the opportunities that we have. And a huge part of this is taking our opportunity to plan and planning is key. It's critical for anything. Think about the role that you're in in your life, whether it's as a parent or in your career. If you don't have plans things really aren't going to advance. And I'm probably preaching to the choir here because this is addicted to betterment. You're here because you want to get better. So I'm hoping that this episode today, where David and I are going to break down our annual routine that we do to plan. And the hope is that you take a nugget or two or five and apply this to you. And it's never too late. We can keep doing planning all throughout the year. We're just going to share with you what we do to start the year very intentionally because why not design the life that we want to live? That is addicted to betterment. And you've heard us talk about the life wheel so many times. Well, we use the exact same tool when we do our planning for the year to build the best year ever. So David, are you excited? Are you as excited as me to dive in and share what we did for many, many days and that we had planned for and we've done years in a row now to help others advance their best year yet? I get excited for those days at the end of the year and at the beginning of the next year where we take time to do that. And it's crazy how many people feel that we fall victim to our circumstances or our circumstances dictate our life. When the reality is, is if you believe that we can create our life versus let life happen to us. And I think that's the basis of what makes this time of year so exciting. And yes, this last year has happened. Life can only be understood backwards. It can only be lived forwards. And so in order to understand how you're going to go the next direction differently, you got to understand what happened in the rearview mirror. So trying to create the reality for our next year and planning on how to do that is one of my favorite things. And of course, doing it with you is my favorite thing of all. So yeah, I can't wait to share this with our friends. Me too. And even though I would not call myself a victim, I definitely have times where I fall into that. Last year was a big one for me. I can think of three pivotal things where victim came out very loud and I got off the train tracks. The important part was I got back on. I lost my dog. That was one of the loves of my life. And that was really hard. And I made every excuse on a lot of levels because I just was not good. And rightly so, you have things that happen and you fall off. The important part is getting back on. I had health problems and man, woe is me. Like, why is this happening to me? And then just family issues that really took it off track. And again, the thing is getting back on. We all fall victim. So here's the thing. You're going to have times like that this year. Things are going to fall off the tracks. They're not going to go as planned. But when you have the plan, you can let yourself grieve for a minute. You can let yourself be angry for a minute. And then you have your plan and you get back on. And that's the game of life is getting back on. Yeah, I agree. It would be foolish for us to expect that it's going to be awesome just because, just because the circumstances around us are going to change and they might, and that would be great. But ideally we would expect it would be awesome and plan to create the circumstances, plan to change the circumstances around us versus just kind of hoping that they change on their own. So putting a plan together and reflecting on last year is is certainly a big part of that. Love it. So we're here to share our plan We're all going to agree that we'll take the pieces and parts that make sense for us wherever you're like, hell yeah, that's for me. Okay, take it and run with it. 
not all these things will be yours. And we're also going to agree that this year is going to be awesome. We are going to work at our best year ever, and we will have downtimes. Things are going to come up. We're going to fall off, but we have our plan and we'll get right back on. Let's just do that together this year. Here we go. All right. So the first thing that is so important in doing this deep dive life wheel planning is making space, dedicating time, building out white space in your calendar. And what that looks like is a lot of stuff. And we're going to dive into this today. Meditative time, prayer time, quiet time, journaling, two-way journaling. I love that. And really, a friend of mine just inspired me to get back on that train, dedicating days for the goal planning in each area. You think, what is most important in your life? And you think about how much time you spend designing your sales process or designing your core values for your team at work. Well, all of those are important, but how much time are you spending on your life planning, your health, your fun, your financials? So we're going to break down what that looks like to really do some deep dive planning in each of those areas. So the first point is making space for this and dedicating time. So as you go into next year, maybe this is something you start to think, okay, I'm going to start time blocking when I have this great abundant time off work in between the holidays. I'm going to take that time. Well, we're already into the year, so that's for next year for you to think about. Now, when should you be taking intentional time to block on your calendars? Maybe it's this year, like Friday afternoons or one Friday a month or one Wednesday a month, whatever that is. The point is you have to dedicate time and make space for planning your life. One of the things I know we both enjoy is on a weekend, maybe a Saturday morning or a Sunday morning, having a little extra time to think through, but that's nice to do regularly in small amounts, but to actually exactly what you said, make a priority to create space, whether it's taking time off work or whatever, getting a babysitter for the kids, whatever it is that you have to clear the space and make it quiet. So there's not a lot of noise. There's a lot of, not of distractions. You can actually think and reflect accurately. And, and I love what you said about journaling because the best way to do that is to start writing it down. If you start writing down the things that happened last year and the things that were great, the things that were challenging, the areas that you want to improve, writing those down, making time to think clearly and write those down is literally the best first step to do that. So I love that. So we have to carve out space because we're probably all the same here that we have intentions And we're like, yeah, we're going to do that next month. And then next month comes and all of a sudden it's summer. So dedicating that time in advance is so important. Otherwise, none of this stuff is really going to work too well. Now let's walk into the next step. So I've been doing this life wheel planning for years. You all have been getting very familiar with my coach, Tommy Richardson, David's coach, Tommy. And those episodes are great, by the way. What do you think? Shout out to Tommy Richardson. So Tommy taught me this practice of the life wheel in my 20s. So I've been doing this for a really long time. David, he's learned that. And now this has just become our tool that we use together. So over the years, it took me a long time. Like I'm saying, just a couple of years ago, did I start to see how important reflection time is? I think many times in the high achiever type, like I'm going for it. We're going to have the best year. We're going to 10X this. You just don't sit and you don't do the reflection. And that is so powerful. There is so much power in personal reflection. And that's just not for annual planning. That is daily before you go to bed. It's like as important as your morning routine. Before I go to bed, did I do what I was going to say? What did I learn today? What am I grateful for today? Just reflection, whether it's one minute or we're doing annual reflection, It's so powerful. David, I have a number of questions I'm going to share that we asked, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on the power of reflection. I agree with the power challenge I would put out to my friends. I know it might feel awkward to some, and if it does, try it anyway, but do this with your significant other. Why do sports teams do this at the end of a game? They sit down and reflect over the game and look at the video and see other things that they're going to do different. I mean, sports teams do that regularly. Businesses do that. They sit down at the end of the year and go over what happened this year, financials and this and that and all the different areas of the business. If you do that as a couple, man, the power in that is awesome. So my challenge is do that with your significant other. If you're not used to it, it will feel awkward. Let's just get it out there. It's going to be hard. Maybe it's uncomfortable. Maybe some of the conversation topics are a little uncomfortable. Hard conversations, easy life, easy conversations, hard life. I've heard that many times and I believe it with all of my heart. So 
a lot of those conversations are rewarding and fun when you think back, because it's easy, as I said earlier, you're in the moment. We live so much in the moment. The challenge that we're facing right now or the joy that we're facing right now, the victory, if we look back at just the steps of the year and how that went, man, it's an awesome thing to do, especially with your significant others. So that would be my big challenge. I love that. So David, you mentioned sports and let's talk about like professional sports players, the percentage of people that get to be a professional football player. Let's say they've spent a ton of time and energy to be able to get that little teeny tiny percentage that get there. And you know how much time they spend after each game reflecting on the plays. If we as observers watch that, we would probably be blown away. We don't even know how much time they spend, but it's a ton and they are NFL players. Again, we only get one life. This is your whole life. This is our whole life. We only get one shot from what we think, or at least this one round, and we want to make it our very best. And so the importance of spending this time on the reflection of your whole life, it's just a really big deal. So with that, I overlooked that for many years, and now it's become the practice after dedicating the time and space and then getting into a centered spot in a quiet zone where you're just prepared to do something like this. Now let's ask ourselves some questions. And sometimes they're tough. And sometimes the outcomes of those were like, oh man, I did say that. Looking back, I didn't do that. And it's important to hold ourselves accountable. What's the pattern there? Oh, I've done that three years in a row. How do I intercede so that that is not happening this year? I'll just give you a couple of examples of questions. So what were the major accomplishments and successes? I think there's great energy in starting with the positive always. So if you can take this for your team meetings or your family dinners, let's start with the positive because then you're going to be able to build so much better than like, where did you suck last year? The conversation doesn't go as well, I promise. What challenges did I face and how did I overcome them? very positive oriented. So we're not looking at it like, let's make a list of all the things I failed at. Hey, what challenges did I face? And then how did I overcome those challenges or not? Maybe things that you didn't overcome. What did I try new this year? There's so much power in trying new things. What did I push myself to do to go to that class that like, gosh, I felt like such a goober in that first class, but really liked it or I didn't. And I'm not going back. What did I learn about myself in terms of my strengths or areas for improvement? I took the Gallup Clifton Strengths last year. I had taken it before, but I just don't remember the powerful outcome like before. But man, last year, it made so much sense. And so I was so deep in my strengths last year and this year because of doing that. And then just so in reflection, okay, how do I take that and put it towards these plans that I'm about to do? Are there any patterns or themes in my achievements or in my challenges, in my journey? What are some patterns that are happening and recognizing those? Do I want to keep doing those or are they things that are holding me back? Which relationships really evolved this year and who really played a big role in my life this year? What were the goals that I wrote down last year? Let's look at that notebook. Look at those exact goals and how did I do? Maybe some of us, it's like, man, I got the spreadsheet and I track it. I knew that way before I was doing my planning. Good for you. I need to get better at that. And then which new skills or knowledge areas did I acquire? And then how could I leverage those go deeper? Like I got to a certain level, I could go deeper or maybe it's something I'm not going to take with me. There's all kinds of things. You can go out and Google questions, but powerful reflection questions. And then like David said, doing that with your partner, if you've got a partner, do that because you can really be sometimes saying things out loud is really hard, but there's a lot of power in saying things out loud or just vulnerable to be able to do that at a deeper level than just doing it with yourself. Yeah. What I was thinking is what goals did I set for myself last year and how did I do on those goals? Did I hit them? Awesome. Where did I progress on them? Where did I fall short? Did I miss them? Why? (laughs) If you have those written down, that's ideal if you can, if not remember them. But I know for me, it's a powerful thing to look back and see what I wrote down last year. And then some things are like, I know we did this together. You're like, man, I killed this one. I killed this one. I killed this one. And then you get to one, you're like, mm, oh boy, <laughs> let's maybe I'll write that one down again this year and I'll, I'll come up with a different plan, but just revisiting what you set for last year. And if you came up short, why? Maybe you set the goal wrong. Maybe it wasn't a goal you should have set in the first place, but um, getting clear on what those goals are for this next year will, will help you. But that's one that I like to look at and then revisiting my identity and my core values, because I feel like that evolves and change as we evolve and change and our life evolves and changes and the circumstances around us, whether it's career, 
marriage, kids, location, all the things. And so we're kind of revisiting that. Who is my identity right now? I want to be very clear on that because that will help guide my goals and how I achieve those. So for me, those are the things I like to also revisit at the end of the year, just getting clear on my identity and who do I want to be in 2024? Of course, even further beyond that, but you got to start now. So those are the things I love to think about. And I was just thinking about how I felt when we were doing this together. We have this mudroom that is now transformed into this, David calls it the results center because his desk is out there. And he and uh, his friend, Mark, they have this like kind of funny thing about building these office spaces. It's the results center. I'm like, I'm buying in on that too. So I'm sitting in, in my results center right now as I'm talking with you as well. Anyway, we were sitting out in our transformed mudroom, which is now a very comfy space with plants and just very nature energy windows. And we have a little fireplace out there and we're sitting there doing this reflection. But I do remember sharing in our greatest joy of the year. Like when we said, what brought us the most joy that was so awesome? We just were really proud of and just really loved doing. And we both said our bucket list trip and being able to take two weeks off work to do that bucket list trip. So just the feeling of sharing in that and in so much of attracting more in the future of what we want is that feeling space. And so we were just both on the same page with that. And I'm like, heck yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to do it at that level every year. Hey, let's go for it. But a bucket list trip, taking time off, having great teams behind us so we don't have to be stressed while we're gone. Man, it was awesome. Thanks to the teams behind us for that. Definitely will be an example of something we'll be going for again in the future. So Nikki, I'm curious as we start talking into transitioning into doing that life wheel planning, something that you do, I do as well. I think you put a lot more intentionality into it, but a lot of people are very familiar with this, the word of the year. I know how important that is to you and and a lot of our friends do that and help me understand why you feel that's so important. And then maybe the process that you use to determine what is going to be your word of the year. Share that with me and our friends today. So I have a dear friend that she is extremely passionate about the word of the year thing. And as long as I've known her more than 15 years, this word of the year thing has been in her life. I haven't always done it. Really, the category for me in this, the learning, the teaching is a theme. What is my theme for the year? Like, what is this main thing? I can remember one year as an example when I didn't do a word. Like this year, I did a word. Last year, I've done a word for the past five at least. But I had a song. For those of you that don't know, I'll just insert this. I love the artist Pink. If anyone happens to know her and could ever introduce me, I promise you your lottery ticket that I will give you in return will be extremely exciting. One day I'll meet her. It's on my goal sheet. But my point is I had a song instead of a word and it was just like fire. For those of you that know that song, it was the year it came out. But that was like a theme song. That was just what I was doing all year long. This year, I am back on the word, and I have done that for a few years, and it is a lot of quiet time and really asking God to like direct that. And for those of you that have been in the magical mountains and outdoor experience of Sedona, Arizona, how this ties together almost brings just emotion to me. I hadn't even really been thinking about the word of the year, but something had been on my heart about using my strengths in a louder way. And it's been there. It's tugging. It's tugging. And I was sitting on a red rock in Sedona in early November. It was the first week of November, I believe, of 2023. And I was sitting out there and everybody was quiet. There's 25 women sitting out there. And we were not talking about word of the year. It was not that. It was meditation and topic of being present or something. And something nudged me. You have to use your gift of inspire not inspiration. Like you are here to help inspire people. I'm on these red rocks. I'm in Arizona. I don't know about you, but like when I'm in nature, God speaks to me louder. It's almost like the tree was speaking to me. It did. And I was clear. I am here to inspire. And I remember I had a journal and I went back and I wrote it down and I was like, word of the year 2024. And I spent time thinking about it and it just hasn't changed. So my theme is to leverage my ability to influence people through dreaming 
and activating a plan because man, when you've got dreams and you've got a plan in motion, I truly feel there's not much bigger loudness that you can live than when you have that. And I know that I have a gift to help people with that. I love doing it for myself and I love sharing that with other people. So I encourage that you have a theme of the year and however you get to that word, I think it's just a lot of reflection on, is it a song? Is it a word? However you do that. David, how about you? Same for me. I can actually think back to a few years where it was a song that I would play every single solitary day. It kept me in that mode for a very long time. So you set the word, you're very intentional about it. You feel strongly about it. How do you personally keep that word front and center throughout the year? It's easy to do in January. It's fresh. You're like, this is my word of the year. I'm going to inspire. But then it gets March. Life is happening. It's happening fast. Business is happening. Circumstances, relationships, all the things. You get into the summer, travel. How do you keep that word as life is spinning a million miles a minute? How do you keep that word front and center for you? I don't know the exact statistics here, but you could quickly Google it. All of us could. The percentage of people that reach goals when they write them down and then those that revisit them, it's like to have a goal and then to think about a goal and then to write a goal down and then to revisit it every day. The percentages of people that reach them through that sequence, right, is so much stronger. So when you write them down, it's much stronger than just thinking about it. And then when you're seeing them all the time, it's even stronger. And it's a very small percentage of people that do that. And so what I do is I have it in my presence in a lot of places. So I have a journal. I call it my life wheel book. It's just a blank journal book. And I then use that for all of my life wheel planning. So part of that building out white space is having a dedicated place for all of your thoughts in one place. You have one journal that keeps all of your planning for this year together in one place. And it's so powerful because I used my book from last year and so did David in planning this year and use that as part of reflection. My point is the word inspire is at the top of my life wheel on this book. The word inspire is on my wall where I see Q1 2024 and my key goals. And I look at them every morning. I look at my day and what I am doing and are the things that I said that I need to do in my day or things need to go. Am I taking a step? What does it look like in my week? My point is it is very visible and I'm putting it everywhere that I can so that it is in my presence. That's good. For myself, I do something fairly similar. I have notes in my phone that I look at every morning as a part of my morning routine. And that note for me is just called when today. I usually have multiple things that I need to do for myself to win that day. And I know if I get to the end of the day and I did those, no matter what else happened in that day, if I did those, I won the day. Sometimes I just claim winning the day, even if I don't get them done. But that word, is on there so that every single day I look at that and I'm reminded every day that I'm going to win the day and I'm going to do it with this presence. That's just a hack that I use. I'm curious, do you put use a word of the day and that's our word of the year and that is your word or do you have other words for categories of your life? The inspire is the main word. Again, I think of like life theme for the year. I'm going to answer your question, but I'm going to start walking into our practice for how we do the life wheel activity. So you've heard us many, many times on this show talk about the life wheel. It's like the core tool that we use. So most of you know what we're talking about. For those of you that don't, no problem. I'm going to speed you up. But for those that are here, maybe you'll pick up another little tip, but you're like, dude, you've talked about this like 25 times. I'm like, we use it every single day. So we'll always talk about it. I'm just going to give you a visual for a second. If you take a blank piece of paper, eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, okay? At the very top, you're going to write your theme. So is it your word? Is it your song? Whatever your theme is. Maybe it's a quote. I don't know. However you do your theme, you put that up top, the very teeny tiny top of the paper, like your title. And then I want you to draw a big circle. And for me, I love to draw circles, but I like circle it 20 times to make it look like a, I don't know. I don't know. I just think it looks better that way. So however you design your circle, draw your circle. What if it's someone like me that looks more like an egg? And if it's an egg, that's fine as a form of a circle. Mine looks more like a football. Yes. Your football, your egg, your circle, whatever it is, your donut, however you do that, it's perfect. It it is perfect for you. So you then draw this out and then there's different versions of how many categories. We love eight. We think eight is a magic number because it's manageable and it also allows you to kind of get all the hats that you wear in. It's still hard to narrow down into eight, but let's just say circle on the piece of paper, 
cut it into eight pieces of pie. Each of the eight pieces of pie represents the hats that you wear in life or the most important categories that make you whole. So for me, I'll just walk through this. God, David, health, work, finances, relationships, personal growth, and fun. It could be completely different. I'm sure that there's some overlap. I hope your health is on there. So you have these eight different categories. David, to answer your question about do you have other words, my first step, once I have defined those different pieces of pie, all of the things that make me whole, is I just write words of intention that are who I want to be in that section this year. A great way of saying it is, what does ideal look like? For example, in God, I have connected, obedient vessel. In David, I have connected, loving, collaborative team, power couple. Whatever the words are that are important to me, like in fun, I only have two, intentional and bucket list. Those aren't as important as my overarching theme word of inspire, but I am making sure that I know my most important eight categories. And then I want to have a note off to the side that makes me remember when I see this every single day, what is ideal for me? What am I going for this year? I can just imagine someone sitting here listening to this thinking, man, that sounds like a lot. My challenge is if you're wondering why some of the areas in your life just aren't getting better, have you thought that maybe you're not spending enough time planning how to change it? Maybe you're just not spending enough time. If it seems like a lot, maybe it's because you're not doing it enough. That would be my challenge to you because I know friends that I've talked to when I share this with, they're just like, man, that just seems like a lot of work. A lot of time it is. And if you want to succeed in those areas and make sure that you're really moving your life forward in every area of your life, that's the only way to do it. It's not going to happen accidentally. It's just simply not going to happen accidentally. Otherwise, what happens is you get to the end of the year and you look, oh, man, I didn't grow any in my finances or in my health. It's the same as it was when I started the year. Well, it's because you didn't do enough time putting a good plan together. And then I know we're going to talk about systems to achieve those goals. But if it seems like a lot, my challenge is try it and see how successful it'll be for you. I love that you said it could feel like a lot. And I just want to bring that to life with an analogy really quick. So David and I were with some dear friends of ours last night that we don't see very often. We went over to their house for dinner. And I'm pretty sure that she told us that she's 68 years old, okay? She does not have one cavity in her mouth. Not one. I'm like, what? Like, she's so crazy amazing about preventative and planning, like, at the top. And so let's just talk about our teeth and caring for our teeth. So if we didn't go to our checkups twice a year, we didn't brush our teeth at least twice a day, we didn't do flossing and fluoride and all that, think about the amount of time and energy and money you would spend with the dentist or in pain. Well, just like in any area, when we don't do it, it's so much more expensive and painful. And so it's really important to get ahead of it. Well said. Well said. Okay. So David, the life wheel, we've talked about that many times that when you're looking at your fresh new year or wherever you're at, even if like, please, if you're listening to this, don't be like, oh, I'm taking note. I'm going to save this until December of 2024 or the first week of January, 2025. You can take this and you can do this all the time. It doesn't have to be done exactly at the new year. We're just sharing what we do as a more in-depth planning when we have a lot of white space dedicated to do it. So then in each category, aside from jotting down what does ideal look like so that we can remember, we then take time. Dave and I spend hours on each one. You can do it however you want, but we then get clear on what are the goals. I love what you're saying about getting clear on what ideal feels like. And let's talk about that for just a second, because if I am going to try to drive somewhere if I set a destination, the only way I'm going to get to that destination, if I know where the destination is, if I know where I'm going. So first get super, super clear on what is ideal. What's a level 10 for me in this area of my life? And hopefully every year that changes. Let's just assume that if your finances, we'll use finances. If the things I accomplished last year was a level 10 and this is ideal, well, then obviously if I'm going to really have a great year this year, that's going to be different because I'm going to level up. I'm going to constantly get better. So getting really clear on what is ideal in every area of my life. And the importance of that, once you set those goals, is because then that can be your North Star. That can be your guiding thing as you're making decisions, as you're setting goals, as you're making decisions throughout the year when life is spinning a mile a minute 
and you're like, oh man, well, wait, this doesn't fall in line with what ideal looks like for me. And so I'm going to say no to that, or I'm going to say yes to this because this will take a step towards what ideal looks like. So I think getting really clear on that and then getting clear on that feeling. I love how you said that pause enough to embrace the feeling as if it is to what that will feel like when you have hit and you are living that ideal in that scenario. And I think when you really take the time to do that well, then it's a much easier and clearer path to set the goals and habits to achieve those. And then you can do that however you feel you need to from a depth perspective, how deep you need to go. When I was saying, oh, health was the first one that I did, I spent so much on that because this past year was really challenging. And I know that health is so important to me right now. And I have pages of health stuff. I want to start really quick with God because it's a little bit more simple. And then I'm going to come back and revisit health just really quick. But basically in each area, we do goals habits, and then resources needed. So that's kind of the categories, kind of the main ways we plan. So for God, I had three main things. One was to hone my service time. So how I give back more into my strengths and be really more simplified for greater outcome. So how do I maximize my outcome of my service? And so I've already had a phone call with the nonprofit that I spend most of my time giving to, and I have three ways that I'm spending my time giving. So just as an example there, and I got lots to do there. I want to increase my giving, like my tithing and my donations by 5% from what I did last year. And I journaled about where my relationship is with God right now. And I want to have a closer connected relationship with God, like I shared connected, obedient vessel. So I wrote where I'm at, and that's really only a feeling standpoint. Like it's not like a number measurable. Like God isn't going to be like, well, now you're a seven. I have to know. So I've got my like baseline for what I shared. And then I'll know when I journal again at the end of the year, the beginning of next year where I'm at, but I'm constantly working on getting better there. So those three things, how do I serve in a more maximized way to use my strengths and simplify How do I increase my giving? And I have 5% as the minimum. And then my relationship with God being more connected and obedient, I journaled and I know where I'm at and I will only be able to tell if it's gotten deeper. Real quick highlights on the health. As I look at health from physical, nutrition, sleep, mental, preventative, beauty, and personal well-being. So that's a lot of categories. And so in that, there's a lot of planning that goes into it. And you might have one of your eight areas of your life wheel that has a one page plan. And that's fine. Maybe all yours have a one page plan. And then something else just needs a lot more care and love to get to where you're going to go. But if we break down each category, it's really goals and then our habits, what we're going to do and hold ourselves accountable to on the regular. And then the resources needed or the things we need to try or people we need to call in order to get there. That's good. And what I love about this is that we do it slightly different, which is awesome. It shows that there's no certain way. Don't have to use my way or Nikki's way. You know, take a version of this, make it your own. And and that's what makes it great. But for myself, my buckets are Nikki. Congratulations. You're one of my buckets. Nikki finances, parenting, health, key relationships, personal growth and faith and business and career. With that, for myself, like key relationships, when I do this, I use the GPS system, goals, plans, systems. So what's my goals? What are my plans and what systems am I going to need to put in place to do those? So for key relationships, for me, I identified five personal relationships that I know elevate my life and I want to make those win-win relationships. And then I also identify business relationships. They're not people that necessarily that I work with every day or that I organically talk to every day, but this is something I'm going to be intentional about that they are going to elevate me in the business world. And hopefully I can elevate them. It's a win-win relationship, but being intentional and not just expecting that those are just going to fall into my lap or happen accidentally. And Nikki, you've taught me a, a heck of a lot about that. So thank you for that. But that's just the ways that I done that. A bucket for me is key relationships and then identifying what does great look like for me? Great ideal was these five personal relationships that, that just elevate me as a man, elevate me as a human. And then five business relationships that's outside of my ordinary day-to-day activity that are going to elevate me and win-win relationships. And then for me, the important thing is figuring out the systems that I'm going to implement 
that's going to help me achieve that ideal scenario so that I can do that year round. That's awesome. And I love that you said, hey, we do that a little different. We're sitting side by side and we have the same philosophy, if you will, but we're doing it a little bit of a different way. And you might do it a whole lot of a different way. The important part is to have a plan for designing the life that you want in the future. David, we're going to draw this into a conclusion here. And I think it's important to talk about the maintenance of this. So all of this is about planning. And we said in the beginning, it's like, No one sets out to be like, oh, I don't really want to make this year any better. Like we all want to make it better. We want to make this our best year yet. And then things happen. So what does maintenance look like to see this through that in May, we're as excited about the things we wrote down and we are staying intentional there. I'll kick off and David play some tag team here because I know that you're really good at this. So again, dedicating time. It's not like dedicating time to do the plan and that's it. Like you have to dedicate time regularly. And for me, the greatest thing that I've found to do is I just bring this into my morning routine. So it is daily. I'm much more into my morning routine Monday through Friday or my work days than the days that I'm not. I mean, not that I don't do a morning routine at all on my off days, but when I'm working, I have a very solid typical routine day. And so my typical Monday through Friday has at least an hour of a morning routine. And we've talked about that on here. And I think we're going to do a deeper episode on that this year as well. But I have my book, my life feel book, which we had said is so important. You've got this one thing that has all your notes in it. And I look at this every day. I see 2024 inspire. I see my categories. I see my words next to them. I flip through the pages. I just added something into my new year this year as I go through this as part of achieving the outcomes that I want. I have a list called the frog list. Where does this even come from? Eat the frog. It's part of a book. I read it a long time ago, but I'm back on this. It's like, what is the frog? What is the big thing I'm going to do today? Or the two things I'm going to do today? Point being, having a routine. And then it's like right now, daily morning routine, I'm probably looking at it for about 15 of my morning routine minutes. But then David and I have regular date nights throughout the year where we're like, let's do a life field date night. Or we'll have like a Saturday morning dedicated spot, but it is blocking time back to you got to have the time, the white space blocked and then regular accountability. And for me in my bucket for God and service, I have a good friend that's also part of the same nonprofit. She and I were just together for lunch yesterday. We were planning things that we're doing to accelerate each other in our service. We have roles with this nonprofit to be able to help each other. She's accountability for me with that. So dedicating time, figuring out when that is, having accountability, the maintenance part of this is really crucial. You can spend all the time in the world. You could spend days, weeks, months, whatever, setting plans, setting goals. If you don't revisit them, you're most likely not going to achieve them. Your chances are going to be low. It's laughable to me that a company would not set goals until midway through the year, not sit down, revisit them, where we at, how we come in. And then they get to the end of the year and think, and our profits aren't where they should be. Our margins aren't where they should be. We're losing money here. Well, (laughs) maybe as a company, we should have done a lot better job setting these parameters and visiting them. It's the same personally the exact same personally. So for me, the systems are spend the proper amount of time getting clear on the goal setting, setting the goals right, but more importantly, just revisiting them regular. So one, I love what you said, put it on your calendar because the reality is we're human. It's very possible. It's going to get to March. It's going to get to April. And one of the goals that I set, whether it be financial, whether it be my key relationships, maybe it's my parenting. It's not going as I hoped it would. I had some curveballs. Think about you last year, health, perfect example. Some of the biggest curveballs of your life were in health. But if you just have those written down and revisiting them, you can always get back on. You can always get back on the train and keep pursuing those goals. It's never too late when you sit back and revisit them and get clear on them again, get reinvigorated, rejuvenated, re-inspired because we need that regular visit to those to maintain that excitement, maintain that consistent pursuit of what we're trying to achieve. So for me, you do this for me very well, putting it on the calendar. Otherwise, if you don't put it on the calendar, it's a good chance it's not going to happen. Find what the system is that works. That would be my encouragement. Whatever system it is for you, for me, my system is just being married to someone who has a system. That's my system. (laughs) That's terrible, but it's true. Well, my system is being married to someone that is really great with accountability. So I love that. Yeah. Power and partnership. 
I want to come back really quick to the eat the frog thing because I was curious. I'm one of those people, I will Google anything or TikTok, watch the video or whatever. I want to know like right now. So Mark Twain was the one that first introduced the eat the frog, just so we know. And it was introduced as the productivity method. And then it was Brian Tracy who wrote the book, Eat the Frog, 21 Ways to Stop Procrastinating. So basically, in case you're like, what are you talking about with eating a frog? It's do the hardest thing first in the morning. So it's like one or two things, get those out of the way. And then you're like, you feel so much better because you're like, I got that done. I can conquer anything. But I just wanted to make sure that I explained that because they're like, why is she talking about eating frogs when they're doing life planning? Yeah, that's great. Well, you put systems in place. The best system that you can uh, put in place to achieve any goal is to eat the frog. I think that is well said. Yeah, this is awesome. Hey, we can't wait for the journey this year with you. We're going to be actually doing some intentional sessions this year, both couples together for life planning together, like dreaming and designing your life. And then also just anybody that would want to come, but we're really passionate about helping couples do this together and anyone that would want to do it, whether couple or not. So we're excited. We hope to meet more of you this year and do this whole thing called the life wheel and life together. We'll see you next time. Let's do this. So you just listened to this episode. Now, join us in being addicted to Betterment. Please subscribe to the show, share with your friends, tag us, and please take a moment, leave a review. Yeah, we do want your stars, but we also, we really want the feedback.